Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Today, once again, I'm going to be interviewing my favorite guest. Naturally, that's me. And we're going to be talking about Gladys Osborne Leonard, who is certainly one of the very greatest spirit mediums of the 20th century. She was born in 1888 and died in 1968. And uh, throughout most of her adult life, she successfully practiced as, as a medium. Uh, she was studied for, we're talking about half a century now, consistently showing integrity, honesty, a great character, and the willingness to work with scientists the, the entire time. So, uh, it's really an incredible story. There's much more uh, about her than we could possibly cover in a, <laughs> a short conversation like this. I should also say, for the benefit of uh, some viewers who are uh, wondering why there have been so many classic reboots and classic videos from the original Thinking Aloud series broadcasts lately, people have been inquiring, is Jeffrey okay? As you can see, I'm just fine. I've been working on a project. Uh, I won't go into that now. Eventually, I think you'll uh, discover what it's about when uh, the time is right. And now back to Gladys Osborne Leonard. I think one of the highlights of her career is a doctoral dissertation published, as I recall, in 1937 by John Thomas. And he received a doctoral degree for a nine-year study working with Gladys Osborne Leonard. The study was done under the uh, supervision of William McDougall at Duke University, who was the chair of the psychology department. Du McDougall is, is the person who uh, originally invited J.B. Rhine to come to Duke University and begin his research, which established the modern discipline of parapsychology. But, uh, even then, uh, McDougall himself, who was considered one of the uh, great psychologists of the 20th century, was deeply interested in questions of, of mediumship and spirituality and, and psychic phenomena and how they interacted with the world of professional psychology. So, John Thomas uh, began to develop an interest in mediumship when his wife died. As I recall, it would have been about 1926. And uh, he spent the next nine years investigating whether she survived on the other side. He communicated with various mediums. He was very meticulous, took very careful notes. And quite often, he did not appear in the seance because in those days, People were concerned that if a, a sitter, as they were known, shows up for a medium and the medium provides all sorts of accurate information about the deceased, how do we know that the medium wasn't just reading the mind of that person? Short distance telepathy, or maybe even a very clever person can read muscle signals. It, it's hard to say. So, in order to counteract that potential criticism, uh, what was no, done was known as the proxy sitter. And uh, this occurred in most of these instances over the, the nine years, especially with Gladys Osborne Leonard, who was in England, and John Thomas was in America. He sent other people uh, there to inquire on his behalf, people who knew nothing about his wife. Uh, and here's what he determined over nine years. He 
found, and I'm reading this figure, 2,964 specific points of fact that were mentioned by Mrs. Leonard, Gladys Osborne Leonard, with regard to his deceased wife. Of those, he determined that 2,358 were correct, 196 were incorrect, and, and the rest were either inconclusive or unverifiable. So, of the verifiable statements made by Mrs. Leonard, 92% of them, were, he judged as being accurate. And uh, that's a very high percentage. Imagine a baseball player who gets a hit 92% of the time they come to bat. That's sort of because I like to compare great psychics with baseball players. I think their batting averages are usually comparable, but Mrs. Leonard here is hitting 92% over nine years uh, in this research by John Thomas. Well, another one of her sitters was the Reverend Charles Drayton Thomas, a Methodist minister, he had 500 sessions with Mrs. Leonard, many of which were involved in him communicating with his deceased father. And he was quite interested in uh, what he called the newspaper test. He would ask his deceased father, can you tell me if uh, in tomorrow's uh, newspaper, the London Times, on uh, the front page, third column, uh, etc. What what story is going to be published then? And uh, he got accurate information about that. I think he uh, claimed it was roughly eighty percent accurate. And uh, what impressed him about this, because we're now talking about precognition, so uh, he came up with the thinking that in the world of uh, the afterlife, the deceased, including his deceased father, have access to information that's in our future. His father was giving him information about the newspaper uh, stories and headlines from the next day before the type was even set. So, it wasn't knowable to people at the time he received that information, and uh, yet it was highly accurate. Well, to be fair now, the most famous incident in uh, Gladys Osborne Leonard's mediumship, I suspect, had to do with her relationship with Sir Oliver Lodge. Now, Sir Oliver Lodge, uh, many of our present day uh, viewers are not going to know who he is, but he's one of the great scientists of the uh, late 19th, early 20th century. He has original patents for the radio. One might even say he co-invented the radio, not working with Marconi in Italy, but uh, independently. He also came up with uh, the concept of the radio. He also invented, I think, the loudspeaker. He was the president of the uh, British Scientific Association. And uh, actually, I understand he was actively involved in the uh, Eddington-Einstein research in, in, in which Eddington confirmed Einstein's theories, much to uh, Oliver Lodge's dismay, according to the movie I saw in which Oliver Lodge was a character and he was a Newtonian, a thorough going Newtonian. But in fact, he was a spiritualist even before he encountered Gladys Osborne Leonard. Well, why would he have encountered her in the first place? We're talking about her as, as a well-established medium, but she wasn't always, uh, was she? Indeed, that's true. Gladys Osborne Leonard, uh, born to a wealthy family, but they lost their money. Uh, she always had spiritual inclinations, but they were discouraged by her family. Uh, she went into the theater. That was her initial career. She had small acting jobs, but 
in those small acting jobs, you have a lot of extra time waiting for your role to come on stage. And so she would sit with the other actors. And in these days, we're talking about the uh, early 20th century. Uh, she would engage and uh, they would try to work, uh, have little seances with Ouija boards and the like. And uh, according to her biography, she wrote three books, incidentally. Um, My Life in Two Worlds is probably the most well-known. And uh, she would sit regularly with her fellow actors trying to conjure up spirits with no results. I think it took them six weeks before they got the tiniest little result. Uh, but eventually, a spirit control, a spirit guide named Feta or Feta came, uh, who spoke with a little childish baby voice and claimed to have been one of uh, Gladys Osborne Leonard's ancestors. Uh, this was never verified. And in fact, many of, of the researchers involved think that Feta, along with many other control spirits of great mediums, are aspects of the subconscious mind that sort of bridge the gap between the world of consciousness and what we could call the bardo planes. I love that term. It's a Tibetan term for the different levels of the afterlife. In any case, Oliver Lodge, uh, his son, Raymond, was killed in World War I, and uh, he and his wife were distraught. Uh, his wife went to see a, a, a medium, not a very well-known one at the time. Uh, Vout Peters was his name, and uh, Raymond came through. This is shortly after his death, and he made a point of telling Lady Lodge that uh, there would be a photograph of him. It was very important. They should know about this photograph that he was had been taken. And uh, Lodge picked up on this. He had a transcript of the uh, session that Lady Lodge had had with Peters. And uh, so he arranged a session with another relatively unknown medium who was Gladys Osborne Leonard at the time. And he began asking her. He took the initiative. He said, what about this photograph? And once again, Raymond came through. And in this case, Raymond is talking to Feta. Feta is then repeating what Raymond tells her to Lodge. And Raymond says, first of all, yes, I talked about the photograph, but not to you, Feta, to a different medium. Who was that? I don't remember uh, is how, it, how the discussion went. But then Lodge asked for more details and Raymond specified many things. He said he's with a group of soldiers. The picture was taken about a, I think about a week before he was killed in the war. And he, he's sitting with a, more than a dozen other soldiers and he's seated on the ground and he's carrying his, holding his walking stick uh, while he's seated on the ground. And the guy behind him is leaning on him, pushing him kind of to the side. Now, you can see this. I'm showing you the photograph right now. You'll, you'll see it. <laughs> the person behind La, uh, Raymond Lodge, who is second from the right on, uh, seated on the ground. That's him. That photograph only arrived uh, about, I think it would have been over a week later. You see, first uh, there was the session with Peters, then uh, they got a letter from a comrade of uh, Raymond's uh, family of a comrade of Raymond's who said, "There's we have this photograph and we think you'd like to see it. It might be of value to you. Uh, we're sorry for your loss. And so they arranged to have the photograph sent. And then uh, while it was being sent, Lodge had the session with uh, Mrs. Leonard, with Gladys Osborne Leonard, who was a married woman. Her husband, Fred, supported her mediumship. And uh, so then after all of this, the photo arrived. And it was very much like Raymond had described through uh, Mrs. Leonard's mediumship. And uh, Lodge published a book called Raymond uh, about 
the survival of his son. It was a bestseller and it catapulted Gladys Leonard to international fame as, as a medium from that point forward. One of the interesting cases reported uh, was by a, a woman named uh, Katie Dawson Smith who had a session uh, with Gladys Leonard. And in this session, her son, who was also killed in the war, came through and he said to her, he said, Mom, look in the closet for my old leather wallet. In that wallet, you are going to find a receipt for a, a, a bill. I, I had a bill. Uh, I, it's already been paid, but that receipt is going to be very important and I want you to find, find it. And so, Katie Dawson Smith looked. She didn't know anything about the wallet. She found the wallet in the closet. In the wallet was a receipt. And it, I think it took four years from the time she had that reading until she received a letter from a company in Germany that was trying to collect debts because uh, the, the war had uh, interrupted normal business transactions between uh, people in England and people in Germany. And this German company thought that the, there was an unpaid bill and they threatened they were going to sue her if she didn't pay the bill that her son owed. But she was able to show them the receipt. It was a check stub actually that showed that her son had paid the bill and she explained everything in a letter to the company and they sent her back an apology. She then notified the Society for Psychical Research, sent all of the relevant documents. One of the most fascinating instances of uh, proof of survival was reported by a, a sitter who came to see Gladys Leonard named Lily Talbot. And in, in this case, it was her deceased husband who came through and he had a, uh, a notebook. He told her, you've got to find my old leather notebook. It's way on the top shelf of the bookcase. And in that notebook, uh, you will find notes that I've made about ancient languages, Hebrew and Aramaic, ancient Semitic languages. Uh, I have quite a diagram. I've been studying them. She thought, there's no such notebook. What are you talking about? He said, look on page 12 or 13. There's something very important there. Well, she didn't believe that this old leather notebook existed. She thought this is some of the, you know, when you go to see a psychic or a medium, sometimes you're going to get information that's irrelevant. And that's what she suspected in this instance. But nevertheless, she looked in the bookcase and way on the top, top shelf, out of reach, but she got up and uh, was able to retrieve it. She did find a notebook. She didn't think it existed. It was old. It was dusty. Indeed, it was a book of notes about the ancient Middle Eastern languages, ancient Hebrew, Aramaic, uh, etc. Detailed notes. But then on page 13, she found a piece of paper stuck in there. And she opened it up and read it. And it was actually her husband had written down an extract from uh, an anonymous author. Um, it was mediumistic writing, I think, published supposedly by somebody after they died. Mediumistic writing. I'm going to read it to you now because I think you'll find that uh, it's a fascinating account of what death might be like. And here's the passage that uh, Lily Talbot found. It reads, I discovered by certain whispers, which it was supposed I was unable to hear, and from glances of curiosity or commiseration, which it was supposed I was unable to see, that I was near death. Presently, 
my mind began to dwell not only on happiness which was to come, but upon happiness that I was actually enjoying. I saw long-forgotten forms, playmates, schoolfellows, companions of my youth and my old age, who one and all smiled upon me. They did not smile with any compassion or pity that I no longer felt that I needed, but with that sort of kindness which is exchanged by people who are equally happy. I saw my mother, father, and sisters, all of whom had survived. They did not speak, yet they communicated to me their unaltered and unalterable affection. At about the time when they appeared, I made an effort to realize my bodily situation. That is, I endeavored to connect my soul with the body which lay on the bed in my house. The endeavor failed. I was dead. And that's the message that her deceased husband so wanted Lily Talbot to know, a message of the survival of the soul after the death of the body. And I'm going to leave you with these thoughts about Gladys Osborne Leonard. What does it mean to you that such a great medium lived and flourished and was studied for half a century during the early 20th century? How does that impact you and your life today to know that these things have occurred? I'll leave you with that thought and thank you very much for being with me and with me. Thank you.